So I want to talk about Wolf RMS uh, just briefly. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into detail because we submitted this detail in the interest of time. So Ferrum started in 2018 with a goal to make interoperability uh, more accessible, to make Web3 more accessible to the normal user, and just within Web3 as well to solve some of the complex problems of um, multi-chain interactions. Uh, so what we've been working on is interoperability by design. Uh, our core focus is to bring value data and functional interoperability to every chain in the industry. Um, and we, we don't want to just do that to say, hey, here's our tagline. We've been able to accomplish that. You can work with multiple chains and deploy applications on multiple chains. We want to do that in a seamless manner. So we actually care that it is used, that it actually provides value to users, that this actually helps Web3 with further mass adoption because it's easier to deploy um, an application that can utilize the uh, financial infrastructure of Algorand, let's say, the composability and the modular infrastructure of Polkadot and perhaps the compute infrastructure of Kudos. We want to be able to give people the opportunity to actually build infrastructure that utilizes unique use cases. Um, how are we looking to do that? We have aligned um, about a year, year and a half ago, we were deciding which direction to go and we decided that Polkadot and Substrate specifically with its palace system and how everything is being designed is very much in line with our messaging and our goals. So we wanted to bring the power of and benefits of Polkadot and Substrate to the rest of the world, the ability to extend it, the ability to use a standardized framework in order to make things more interconnected and more interoperable. And we're going to be talking about that in this presentation. Um, but before we get into that, we want to talk about a few things that we looked at um, in understanding what makes change succeed and most importantly, what makes change fail? Because there's a new chain that seems to be coming out every single day, uh, much less in the bear market, but in the bull market, everybody's trying to start another L2. Um, and, and you try to figure out what's going on. And most of the time, when you understand what's happening, is they're mostly just clones of an EVM compatible chain, mostly Ethereum with just the fee token change and then a little white paper and a website. And, you know, so they go out, there's hype, TVL goes over, and then it just crashes. There's not really a lot of innovation or problem solving. Um, to, for, for the most part. Um, the ones that are solving these problems, and, and we have some use cases of these because we've integrated some of our products with them, with our bridge and our multi-swap products, our staking solutions, they are too complex to integrate with or develop, uh, which results in high friction. And especially when you look at where most of the interest comes from, which is new projects launching, who raise like you know, 100,000, 200,000, $300,000 to go build something, they don't have the time to be spending a month and a half of paying developer salaries to figure out how to deploy their first D app. That's why EVM keeps succeeding because it's well-documented, it's structured, and people keep deploying applications very easily on EVM chain. So we want to solve that complexity problem so people can actually access and tap into the unique use cases that different chains are providing. I gave the example of Algorand in this case, which provides a financial infrastructure and settlement of assets and it's specializing in that space. So if you can think of it in a, in a sense of what Stripe and Braintree and PayPal are doing, they're trying to do that in this space, but it's, you wouldn't think to build there because it, it's still too complex compared to EVM chain. Now, uh, that, that point hits on something important, which is something that we have focused on, which is developability. A lot of times chains just focus on providing great yield to the community, providing you know, a lot of good rewards early on to try to bring TVL onto that network. They don't focus on developability. They don't focus on something that is almost always an afterthought, which is error handling when things go wrong when you're developing an application on that system. And these are things that frustrate developers. Uh, myself, I started my career off as a developer, still uh, develop a firm network here and there. And all of our engineers agree that it, when we've integrated with chains where we get generic error messages and it's hard to figure out what the heck is going wrong, it just creates frustration and it turns the developers off and it costs more money to the project because it's taking longer to troubleshoot a problem. So we want to make it easy to innovate by not only integrating with different chains, but we are pushing better practices. So in chains where we're noticing generic messages, um, messages that are not helpful, that are uh, coming as a result of some sort of a compilation error or something that we're deploying on a network and there's an issue uh, with the configuration, there's an issue with uh, something that is uh, being uh, utilized. Maybe we're utilizing a library that's not uh, enabled on a specific network. We want to have better messaging, better 
support for developers so they can actually self-serve and, and solve their own issues. And we are encouraging change to make those changes as well, the ones that we are integrating with. Um, and this is why we think that um, decentralization doesn't stand a chance unless interoperability is normalized because in our vision, the future is not going to be a single chain feature. There's going to be many different chains providing different use cases. And there needs to be somebody out there that's sort of making it easy to interconnect with them to utilize their unique use cases. So as I mentioned um, at Ferrum, we focus on developability, developability. We believe that it is actually one of our superpowers uh, and we have implemented that in-house actually. So every single one of our developers develops our applications as if they were an open source developer, meaning we do not allow people to commit directly to our own repositories. They have to fork and they have to commit changes back into our main repo. And the reason we follow this practice is that we want our developers to go through the same things that we open source contributors to our code base and to the products that we're going to release that are going to integrate with are going to go through so they can solve them. And they, they can, in, in, in essence, walk through the shoes of the people that we hope will be helping contribute to our ecosystem and to our network, which will help make the whole system more interoperable. So we have focused on implementing that practice in-house and that has uh, been quite successful and we are starting to already release some of those products to the public now. Um, the really cool thing about our interoperability solution is that it's not meant to be ours. What we're hoping to accomplish here, and I gave an example of this where we are integrating our bridge with certain networks and you know, we noticed some issues that are really frustrating and are actually getting in the way for them to get traction because developing on that network is difficult. So we are providing feedback, guidance, and suggestions to make adjustments on their core protocol to make it easier to develop. So not only are we saying, hey, we're going to make things interoperable, but we're hoping that we can encourage a set of standards and, uh, and actually take the XCM standards, take a lot of what Polkadot Substrate is doing and become an evangelist for it by adopting it, by amplifying it, by creating a set of standards that we're gonna talk about later as well. And some of that work has already been executed and we're gonna to touch on that as well. So what are the core components of our solution? Uh, the two main uh, aspects in terms of standardization are the blockchain interoperability standards and the blockchain interoperability proposals. This is an initiative that we've started and it's in its infancy right now. But for example, we've launched a multi-chain multi token standard that uses the firm network and some of its technology that I'm going to mention here in a moment to deploy a token on multiple chains and balance its supply natively across different chains without having to do bridging of assets across. Um, this is just one example, but if you're going to deploy this token, we don't want this to be the Wild West and everybody deploying their own version of a multi-chain token. So we are um, evangelizing a multi-chain token standard and we're using that same approach across multiple different standards and we hope that others will contribute to this and this becomes something that is for Web3 to use, not just a Ferrum standard. Uh, I think the true success of this comes if a lot of people adopt it and say, yes, we do need standards as we build multi-chain D apps and multi-chain solutions and that's what we're hoping to accomplish. Of course, that can't happen without open source, well-documented code. So we've also initiated this uh, um, uh, execution of, of this uh, milestone here. And uh, we have already open sourced quite a bit of our own work and we continue to do more of this. And finally, uh, the two other things that I wanna mention is um, code base is good and uh, you know documentation is good, but it's nice to have demo applications and tutorials to actually showcase how an actual integration can work end to end. So to this end, when we integrate with a network, not only do we provide documentation, we actually provide demo applications. For example, how can you launch staking on a specific network? How can you launch uh, a bridge as an example? How can you launch a token? So on and so forth. And these basic standard use cases we hope will help developers kind of get their hands dirty and understand how to deploy multi-chain solutions for their specific projects. Um, of course, we want to utilize the Substrate Palette framework. And what we hope is that we can create somewhat of a repository similar to what NPM is, but more for Web3. This is our long-term vision. It's something that we understand is gonna take time. And it's something that we hope a lot of partners in the space will join us in this mission. We want, we, we notice still, even in different parachains, there are solutions being created on parachain one, and then the same solution is being created by another company on parachain two. So we hope that you don't have to do that. You can just utilize the package that's vetted, that's voted on by developers, and you can just utilize it across. So anything that we are building, we're hoping to contribute to the code base to a centralized registry uh, that can be contributed through different decentralized sources, but it is central uh, a central repository where you can go 
and access this information and get the modules that you need, the palace that you need, even outside of Polkadot, utilizing the Substrate framework where you can use it outside of the Polkadot ecosystem. Um, and of course, developer support is important. So that's something that we don't have the resources for right now, but we want to build that infrastructure as we move forward in this space. So what is part of our core technology? Um, and I'll wrap this up in about two minutes here as we go forward. So in terms of our core tech, we have obviously our chain that we are launching as a parachain on, on Polkadot. Uh, we hope to do an auction sometime in the next 12 to 18 months. Um, other than the chain itself, which is going to be handling the transactional aspects and submitting everything to the relay chain, uh, we want to talk specifically about two examples. Why do you need the firm network? So we want to get into what, what it takes to deploy a multi-chain D app without the firm network. So here's an example. You know, you've got your community that's hyped about some new chain that came out and it's telling the project, hey, you really got to get on this new chain that's out there because there's high yield, there's a lot of traction, maybe it's an NFT specific chain and NFT hype is coming. So like, you got to go on there. So the project is dealt with, okay, I only have Solidity developers and the chain, let's say that they're asking me to go to is Solana. So now I need to go find a Rust developer and I need to go figure out how to deploy over there. And then like two months later, they're like, oh, you need to go to Cosmos too. So now you need to go find a Cosmos developer. So for each new chain that you need to go to, you exponentially, your cost increases the project with limited time and capital. And for the developers as well, it's an increased cost to have to learn a new language and learn a new ecosystem every single time. And so hence taking one application deploying across multiple chains takes a lot of effort. We are hoping to simplify that by saying that you need to earn, learn one set of expertise. Rust developers that are familiar with Substrate Framework or can get up to speed with Substrate Framework, can integrate with the firm runtime and through our ecosystem of products and services and solutions such as Quantum Portal and our runtime itself, you can then deploy those solutions that took multi-chain token, multi-chain staking, multi-chain um, leaderboards, vesting, so on and so forth, different use cases. Most of the standard use cases we're going to have built out and you can easily deploy yourself and you can extend others too, but just going through one set of languages, you can deploy it on multiple different chains by utilizing our infrastructure. Um, how the infrastructure works, we've described in detail on our white paper. And of course, I can go over that in our Q&A as well, but most of it goes through our quantum portal uh, set of uh, uh, solutions here. Um, finally, what else makes up the rest of the um, core tech? We have our runtime, of course, that I just mentioned in Quantum Portal, which runs within the runtime. It can be configured um, to integrate with all the chains that we have enabled in that specific um, uh, release. And so using the Quantum Portal, you can deploy an application on every single integrated Quantum Portal network, if you would so like to. Uh, we have an invention that actually Naeem, our co-founder invented, which is value constrained proof of stake, which limits how much a miner can uh, mine on a specific network and uses the security of the layer one network. And then MCVS is another solution that helps with the validation of the transactions on Quantum Portal, which is multi-chain validator stating. So we have a set of miners and a set of validators that come into play to validate these multi-chain transactions. For example, a transaction to deploy a multi-chain token goes through a set of miners and then a set of validators. Some of the use cases, as I mentioned earlier, is deploying a multi-chain token. Right now, if you want to do that, you have to manage supply independently. We've actually helped dozens of projects do this, where you have to deploy a token on Ethereum with, let's say, 600 million token supply, and then you need to deploy it on BSC. You can't inflate your supply, so you have to burn so many tokens on Ethereum and then deploy that money on BSC. Then if you need to manage it again, you have to do this burn and mint again, and it's a whole process. Well, we made it very easy to be able to deploy a multi-chain token without having to manually manage your supply. It just keeps track of the state and updates that. Bridging value, we've built solutions around this. Multi-chain staking, we've built solutions around this. And then most importantly, build once. So build your DApp once on a specific network. And what's really cool about this, it doesn't actually have to be on a substrate network. So you can build it on Ethereum, and then we can actually help you deploy it on other networks. For example, build on Ethereum and deploy on Kudos is something that we are looking at this solution as one of the core values to provide to developers. And this is our team, as you mentioned before. With that, the pitch part of the presentation is done. I'm happy to take any questions if you have at this moment in time or dive into the next part of the agenda. We have two uh, repositories right now that um, covers four of the core of the uh, node development and the quantum portal development. So uh, Perum Network, the node itself, is um, if we started as a frontier template, 
and we're building on that on top of it it now it's like um, um uh, uh compatible with power chain we applied for rococo and uh, it it's configured for xcm we're trying to we're, we're working right now on getting some example connection between our chain and astra to to prove that the xcm part works so these are just general power chain node building um that uh, that we're going through there were other things that we had to uh build build ourselves for example we have the main part of the of the code in um, basically we have a quantum portal uh, palette which quantum portal node which runs as a as an off chain worker and uh, uh, and it let me see if I can find it palettes yeah we have a quantum portal we we, we are using ethereum xcm and quantum portal which works on off chain work this this problem most of the work is happening here that is uh completely related to to our our work but um we had to do other things like with the, some of the contribution is uh, for example we need to generate ethereum compatible um transactions because we are interacting with other EVM chains. So there was no such thing. Um, uh, so, so we had to build our own uh, like encoder and decoder and things like that and use uh, open source libraries. So there were a bunch of um, little things that we had to uh, build to make make these things possible. But in general, um, this Ferrum network uh, substrate uh, node is so heavily under uh, uh, development it involves two main parts the chain itself with the pallets and um, that a lot of it is just um, default and a lot of it is we are bringing from other places Some, sometimes we have to update uh, the what we adopt for example we adopted uh, address uh, 20 like ethereum address from moonbeam because uh, our chain also uh, uses uh, EVM compatible address. And we adopt that, and then we had some issues that we need to like uh, improve on top of it. And then we have this uh, uh, quantum portal node that is running as part of the chain. So when you run your chain, you have, uh, if you look at the CLI here, uh, probably here, so you have uh, uh, maybe I show you the config file is probably easier to look at. So um, when you when we're on the node, we can configure it, configure it as um, basically as a client of other chains too, because uh, it's kind of a more cross chain. While Ferrum node is. It runs mines like creates blocks on on a substrate, but at the same time creates quantum portal blocks, which is a higher level on top of the just substrate blocks, which are um, cross chain. So quantum portal blocks can can interact with other chains, um, uh, EVM compatible and, and also non EVM compatible. So uh, we in our configuration we provide the, what is the quantum portal gateway address. What is uh, your signer, and you can be what is your role? You can be quote unquote a minor authority, or you can be just a, a normal watcher. So, this is one, uh, this is the, the main part of the um, basically the bulk of the uh, code base. We have another part that is called quote unquote smart contracts, another repository. The quote unquote smart contract is implementing quantum portal in uh, solidity. So the quantum portal, you can think of it as kind of a message passing framework. Okay, cross chain message passing framework. So we need to run quantum portal parts in Ferrum, parts in Solidity, parts in um, uh, like, for example, Algorand or other chains that we are working on. Actually, we are, I think we, we, we already, um, we are one of the few projects that we already are com connecting EVM compatible chains in with like completely like with, uh, we already connected with Algorand and with if uh, Taha correct me if 
I'm missing something, and the Casper and some other chains for some other Good projects. Kudos. And we are, uh, our, our roadmap, if we can, once uh, we get to the point that we are happy with the state of the Quran portal, we can quickly port because we have the talent and uh, everything in house to port the quantum portal client on all these chains so that we are automatically connecting everything. For substrate chains, we already have XCM, so we don't need to uh, use quantum portal to connect Ferrum network to other substrate chains. So basically, the uh, flow is. Any other substrate chain can communicate to Quorum Portal directly to XCM, and Quorum Portal can connect to any other chain that is not substrate through Quorum Portal, uh, which is the, basically a message passing mechanism. And the messages are secured by, by uh, right now by proof of stake, but we are going forward to two more two different layers of security. One is value concert proof of stake, which means Basically, if you are running a transaction that is worth a million dollar, you your miners should have a million dollar in value to be able to uh, like validate that transaction. And so, uh, and uh, uh, so that's the quantum portal. Uh, right now, quantum portal is written in Solidity. Uh, going forward, we have to we are integrating quantum portal right directly in the node as a palette. And it has to be very tightly integrated with the XCM too. So these are stuff like technical uh, things that we do. That the reason we do it, we started with Solidity is that oh, we had already Solidity engineers on board, and we already can run Solidity code on firm network. So we say, okay, we, this is easier for us to do it that way. Now we can iterate much faster, and then on the firm network, we kind of uh, kind of um, a proxy Solidity through. Um, uh, X, uh, XCM Solidity uh, um, palettes that Moonbeam has developed or other things that are available. But going forward, we want to just make this the first class citizen of the, of the chain itself. So, uh, yeah, so that's been said. Let me show you some examples that are already uh, working. And actually, uh, my developer today was uh, demonstrating um, a uh, very interesting example uh, that uh, unfortunately is not ready yet. But let's look at one example here. Here is a multi-chain stake. Okay. So this is a staking contract. That name, I think, share stop, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, okay. Let me see. Um, okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, so, this is one example that we have uh, uh, that as that we use as a demonstration is a multi-chain staking. So it's a kind of a um, uh, master-slave architecture. Your master contract, which manages all the state of the staking, things like what is everybody's stake, what are the rewards, what are the tokens and stuff, is run, will run on firm network. You can run it as an ink contract or as a solidity contract, doesn't matter. So we do this um, right multi-chain staking. It interacts with quantum portal. Then like you can see uh, here, this is one interesting part, which is called portal message center. This is a, like a sort of a handler. This uh, smart contract is handler of remote messages. So in a remote contract can call this method on, uh, on the, firm network version of the contract. So this is on the master contract. Uh, any remote contract or a, a slave or client contract, I call this uh, method. This, had, this can handle by calling portal message center. It gives you the beneficiary, the source message center network that is coming from. You do the, your, your interaction. Another part which is interesting is the withdraw. And when you are closing a position, you again, you're telling the portal to withdraw on the target chain that user has a stake. So this will release the funds back on the remote chain to the user. So this is the this is you see that um, uh, this is a master contract. All the business logic goes into this one. So you uh, application uh, if if you if you design your app architecture in a proper like master slave like this, your client becomes super basic. So these few lines 
is all you need to create the client side on Solidity, which you just do the stake and you just call the remote. Basically, all you do is you collect the money and you call the uh, quantum portal remote uh, a stake remote contract on the remote chain. And then quantum portal takes care of transferring the value and transferring the message and executing the transaction in a um, atomic basis. So we have already created, so my we are already working on the uh, ink version of this. So that we're building this uh, 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 basically a stake client as an example of showing how uh, proof of concept of uh, like cross chain uh, this is just some tasks that I, I was working uh, we were talking about it on the stand up today. So we built the ink version of this smart contract. So now, uh, hopefully by next week, we can demonstrate it end to end that we have this staking application. You can stake it from, uh, you can, it runs on Ferrum network. You can run an stake uh, message from um, BSC, run one from Polygon, and run one from A star. And they all are staking on the Sperm network chain. Your asset remains on your, on your, so if you are staking from Polygon, your asset remains on Polygon, but the stake happens, but the state manager is happening on Sperm network. And then you, when you withdraw your assets, you get your asset back on the same network that you did. So this is one example of uh, that I think gives us a good, uh, um, could also be useful. And as an actual application, it be building UI and everything for it. So um, we're trying to build examples and and using these examples, figure out the gaps that in the quantum portal and the network ecosystem to start building it. Another thing that we are working on is a, a cross chain um, uh, explorer that is for uh, basically uh, that is I think it's not that code is not open source yet, but that is not really uh, related to South Street that much. It just works with Quorum Portal and, sh and shows all the cross-chain blocks. But uh, right now, it's not very um, directly related, related to uh, South Street. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I, yeah, I, I just have, it, it's, it might be a very basic question, but it sounds like there's a uh, firm network, which is which the parachain running on collators, which are sort of these validators that um, commit blocks to the relay chain of Polkadot. Um, mm -hmm. And you also have sort of another, potentially another s s proof layer. Of, yeah, quantum yes. nodes. So that's also another set of, um, um, and, and I do understand that's probably for message passing. Um, so, yeah. so just, just to confirm, is that another set of that, like proof of stake validation process going on? Yes, for the, that's that's true. So for so, um, firm runs the regular like you said, and runs a project or call it. So firm network block building itself doesn't need a staking or validator. It's already covered by the quantum by the, by the Polkadot ecosystem. Quantum portal is a cross chain message passing layer on top, and uh, as, a, as a, for example, if we are communicating between Polkadot nodes, Polkadot chains, we don't need uh, any mining, staking, nothing, because it's already covered by XCL. When we go outside the ecosystem, like when we are communicating between uh, Feral Network and Polygon, for example, for that uh, message passing, that's the quantum portal uh, uh, staking and mining and authority mechanism comes into play. So. We are going to have the quantum portal and the stakers and authority on each chain that is not Polkadot compatible. I that see. doesn't Sorry. work with XTM. And that way we can proxy XTM messages through to all these chains. And that's how we can guarantee the security. 